and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's Edelman's Patriots going up against Thomas's Broncos. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Okay, Larry, we are located a couple miles west of the Colorado State Capitol building here in downtown Denver. A moment ago, through a shower of pyrotechnics, it was the hometown Broncos taking the field as they get set to do battle with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis, Sean Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game, so how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. That'll be taken in the end zone. And look at this. Right away, a loose football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And good field position coming up here. The football at the 12-yard line. There's never a good place on the field to fumble the ball. No, let's just call it as it is. But definitely not in your own red zone. <laughs> in your own red zone, it's heightened, isn't it? Because you're almost automatically giving up a score and the momentum, and everything just changes for your team. Yeah, so the kickoff fumble now, great field position. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, so we got it going, boys, let's keep it going. And he will score! Touchdown, Denver! Trevor Simeon taking it in from four yards out. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. That was not a designed run. It was supposed to be a pass, but it turned into an exceptional run. What a scramble for a touchdown. Now McManus on to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And they'll be inside the red zone with a ball at the 16-yard line. And that one is his second fumble loss. Not a good look out of your return, man. And not only does he hurt the momentum for his team or even... change momentum of the game but now they've got a decision to make on his own sideline does he continue to do that do you keep him in that role or do you bring someone else in at this time give him 10 yards there and about by the nose of the football he's going to have a first down many different ways to create space but on that play he did it with that big wide body of his didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play but it did what it was supposed to pick up a first down and not a whole lot there he does get a couple taking it from the five down to the three be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. On second down, here's Simeon. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Virgil Green from three yards out. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. This field at a few yards into the end zone. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And he will take this down to the 10-yard line. And careless with a football there on the kick return. And one thing I love about going to practices is trying to get around coaches and hear their catchphrases and what they really emphasize. We haven't been to a single one yet this year where a guy fielding a kick, you don't hear, tuck it away, tuck it away, tuck it away. 
And this time, they turned it over. Ball security eluded him. They'll run. Anderson. Only a yard that time. Second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. Here's Simeon now on second down. He goes underneath for Anderson. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Now Simeon on third and goal. And he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line, but it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw into that tight coverage, you see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. So give them three there. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they couldn't punch it in. And credit this defense, too. That was the old bend, but don't break approach. But it kept the offense out of the end zone. Tom Brady ready to lead the New England Patriots onto the field. Well, five Super Bowl rings will have to be enough, at least for now. The crazy thing is that you know what we're talking about, Charles. What are the chances he would throw for 500 yards in the Super Bowl? Patriots never punted, and they lost. That doesn't make any sense. None. Because when that happens, his team wins. I mean, I don't think it's ever happened in NFL history. He's the oldest league MVP at the age of 40. He's got plenty left. We'll see him back out there. Yeah, I know you're not doubting him for that sixth Super Bowl. No, not at all. Here's Brady. And to the right side here, it's Allen. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Now let's give you a look here at the New England offense. I think Deion Lewis has hit the NFL at the exact right time for his running style. Not tall in stature, so he hides behind the offensive line a little bit. Jump cuts back there. The defenders can't find him and have a hard time getting him down. Can catch the ball out of the backfield and has that extra ability to return kicks, which also causes a lot of problems for the opposition. This is Lewis. Oh, and now he pulls him over. And he's brought down after a good game. That burst good for 20 and a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging picking it up and making sure it was a catch. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Patriot first down. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And here's a look at the defense for Denver. Chris Harris was named an All-Pro in 2016 for his ability to play in the slot. And as a corner, that's a special skill because now every receiver has what we call a two-way go. They can move inside or outside, and you have to trust your eyes and make sure that they're in the right place. Otherwise, you can get fooled easily in that spot. Brady gives this one to Lewis. And a short game there down to the 37-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So when you saw him dump it off to the back, did you think he was going to pick up the first down there? <laughs> well, I knew one thing. It wasn't his primary target. At least it didn't look like it. 
Turned out to be the play they needed, though, and it's big because it's the opening drive. So converting that third down, keeping the play, not the play, the drive going. Yeah, it certainly appeared like his downfield targets were covered. Threw the little dump off to, the, to his back, and nice effort picking up the first down, though, and you're right. That opening drive, keep those chains. Oh, and Lewis lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Denver Broncos, they missed out on the playoffs for the second straight year. Their offense coming back onto the field here. but And that's coming off that Super Bowl 50 win. I don't know that we expected them to go back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back or anything like that, but I certainly don't think we saw them missing the playoffs the last two years, right? No, you're, you're correct on that one. And a big part of it is, what's one of those old adages in, in, in sports that defense travels and defense is a constant? Well, the Broncos' defense has been exactly that. I mean, look, they were third overall in total defense in 2017. So the idea that they're going to drop to that type of a record with a defense that good, that just tells you about all the offensive struggles they've had. Yeah, we mentioned the quarterback troubles and just 5-11 in 2017 for Denver. First down, here's the run with Anderson. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop right, that go. running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. A dump off to Anderson. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. And he will find his man for the first time, Demarius Thomas. That one goes for 24 yards. He's come a long way since his time at Georgia Tech. What did he run at Tech? He ran hitches and, and go routes, essentially. Yeah. I mean, but he ran them really well. He averaged well over 20 yards a catch while he was there. And he still creates downfield in the NFL. That big body and that willingness to go catch the football. He's pretty impressive. And his friends call him Bebe, the nickname his uncle gave him back in the day. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play. But it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaunton. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and six to start things out. And here comes play number six on this drive. On second down, Anderson. And now running right through it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? From the red zone now, Simeon. And he rifles one incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it, and then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. Right, that yeah, came in hot, Three, but overthrown, nine. out of his reach, and incomplete. Simeon, eluding the pressure right. That's caught. It's Thomas. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. They'll run for it with Anderson. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. C.J. Anderson taking it in from two yards out. And the Broncos will extend their lead. When you talk about a battle being won in the trenches, that touchdown right there, a lot of credit to the offensive lineman. Yeah, when you watch them surge across the front, they really created great space for the runner to get in. 
This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took off Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints? Rookie of the year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Patriot first down. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him? Giving him the ball again, and he repaired him, picking up a first down. Now they'll run with Lewis. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Pardon, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Now they'll throw with Brady. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Brady connecting with Cooks for the Patriot first down. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Domita Pecco. Forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's we'll the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. <laughs> On third and long, it's Brady. And now a fumble. Brady loses the football. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Allen on to punt as he gets this one away. Taken in at the 11. <laughs> what a spin. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. Now we look at C.J. Anderson as he trots back out there and gets set to go on offense. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? C.J. Anderson. And all the way home for a Bronco score. C.J. Anderson with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Broncos add on. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Now McManus for the extra point. And the lead will grow by one more. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And a long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Now McManus on to kick this one off. 
This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. The runner-up New England Patriots offense back onto the field. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the offense for this crew as they go into 2018. How do they stack up, Charles? Typically, New England, pretty darn stable. One of the goals going into the offseason was to try and hold on to running back Deion Lewis because coupled with James White, that's a heck of a tandem. Of course, the big fella, Croc. Deion Lewis past the 20. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Deion Lewis, 75 yards. And the Patriots get a score closer. I'm not sure that they have illusions right now of, okay, we're going to score eight times in a row and we're going to be terrific. But to get one... That was huge for him. That has to feel much better right now. And you do have, we're still in the first half. You do have the entire second half. There's something about that goose egg that just looked bad on that board, but now they've broken it. Yeah, broken through. Can they maintain the pace? We'll see as we go along. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Trevor Simeon and the Broncos heading back out. He's thrown for a touchdown pass, and he's run for one so far. When you're able to watch a guy perform at a high level and do it in multiple ways, they have arm, legs. He really helps his team in a big way. You've got to think that they feel great about where they are in this ball game, and they feel even better about him leading their team. Now he's hoping to put them into a better spot after this drive. Here's Simeon. Screen play. Anderson. And some space here. And they finally get him, but not before he reaches the 33-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 43 yards. The best passing attacks in the NFL often incorporate the guys out of the backfield catching the football. And that's what we just got on that play. As a primary receiver, not always just a check down, not always a safety valve. Sometimes they just get it to him right away because they have the matchup advantage. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back to Denver right after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will have the highlights and analysis of this first half from our studios in Orlando. And I have a fairly solid idea about which team will be featured prominently in those highlights. <laughs> Might be a little biased. And able to find Green. And look out, a big hit to the shoulder pads took him right off his feet at the 17-yard line. As a general rule, offensive linemen like to know where their quarterback's going to be when he's setting up to throw the football. Sometimes they just have to get on the run, get on the move. He was able to do that on that. And caught by Sanders. Touchdown, Broncos. Emmanuel Sanders from 17 yards out. And the Broncos continue to pull it on. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something, right, Charles? Absolutely phenomenal. Ended up beating out Todd Gurley, the running back for the Los Angeles Rams. But he would have traded it for a Super Bowl win, don't you think? How about this? The last nine NFL MVPs to play in the Super Bowl that same season, 0-9. Oh, yeah. We went all the way back to Kurt Warner in, what, 1999, where he won the double? We were going over that stat early. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Brandon Marshall in there to sack him for a loss of six. 
I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Eight yards in the completion, but now they face third down. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On play action, it's Brady. And he will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Throwing on first down is Brady. Allen's got it over the middle. Allen hit. He lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And his guys are going to take over at their own 48-yard line. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back at the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly Special. Quite a story. And as you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game and, of course, people in attendance. A really well-played game. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Simeon. And he will have a man, Demarius Thomas. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Demarius Thomas as the first half is winding down. And the Broncos add on. I heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he loses the football a second time. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secure. And a lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. So we're at halftime here in Denver with the Broncos leading this one. As we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Broncos are simply running the show in the first half. They've controlled the game and are way out in front. The Patriots will have to make some adjustments before the second half gets underway. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Here early in the first, Simeon's looking for Rube to run, and he'll go in for a score as they get out to a 7-0 lead. Pick it up early in the first. Simeon's going to complete the pass, and this two-play drive goes for a TD. Brock goes up now by 14. Patriots on offense, first quarter winding down. Here we'll get a fumble on the run. It's out now after the bubble. They run it with C.J. Anderson. And he'll take it in for the touch. The lead now at 24. Now first and 10. Anderson's got a running lane here. And nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Broncos with a commanding lead. First and 10. Lewis is going to bust out into open space. And he'll win the sprint to the end zone. Patriots down now by 24. Now midway through the second. Anderson's got nobody around him on the catch, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the 33-yard line. Broncos now later on the drive. Emmanuel Sanders making the grab in traffic, and it ends up working for a touchdown. The Broncos way out in front. Now first and 10. Allen's going to cough up the football here. Following the 
a forced fumble. Here the pass goes to the sideline. And he'll take this all the way for a touchdown. The Broncos in control. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. Cody Latimer now on the return. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Time for us to spotlight C.J. Anderson. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground, too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase as this one goes on. Well, they might need to devote some extra attention to him, something just to stop the momentum he has. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. Now a first down throw, Simeon forced out to his left. And he whips that one incomplete there. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's second down. So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. It'll be a three-yard gain, and they're going to face a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Simeon now to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Fowler. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And the Patriots take over. Now a play fake here on first down. Letting one go deep. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second down. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, it's hard to get them started again occasionally. Sets up the screen to Lewis. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. 
Instead of the running back in New England, sometimes they like to call him the passing back. So they get him the ball in different ways, don't they? They certainly do. Think about the ones they've had in recent vintage. You talk about Kevin Falk, Danny Woodhead, Shane Vereen. James White could have been the MVP in the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a certain quarterback that was on the field that day. Into the red zone, it's Brady. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it. But he is able to keep the feet in bounds. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make it a second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. I think he's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school. He's got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, they can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up four. Well, I guess we're at the stage here where they wouldn't say no to any points, but I don't think field goals are what they're looking for here in the second half. I don't either, Brandon. When you're down as much as they are, that's the sign of a head coach waving the white flag to me. Another drive getting ready to start here for Demarius Thomas. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. The reception, good for seven. It's third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Got a man. He finds Sanders. A first down as it's Simeon with a hook up to Sanders. And certainly a valuable tool to have in your kit, Emmanuel Sanders, and he's shown us quite a bit in this one. And that's why they wanted to use him immediately. You know they come out of the locker room saying, let's get the ball to him, get our offense jump started, and in this case, it's worked throughout the game. Thus, they have the lead. Back to throw, Simeon. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. The 20! And he's going to be taken down deep into Patriot territory. A huge play there for Denver. 42 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Stepping up, he'll try, and he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Trevor Simeon, a four-yard touchdown scamper, and the Broncos continue to pour it on. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. And the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. 
The Patriot offense now set to come back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But we also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. On second down, here's Brady. Wide open, Gronkowski. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 17 yards there for the Patriots as they've got themselves a first down. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt. And look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. Nate Solder, the left tackle. He's the culprit. On play action, now Brady. He's letting it fly for Cooks. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. It's Chris Harris with a pick. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. This is such a good read defensively. They know that this offense is going to try to get the ball to their playmaker in space. So what do they do? They crowd him and send bodies at him. And this one winds up being intercepted. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Welcome back now to Denver. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. They run it again with Anderson. And a short game down to about the 33. Only a yard on the pickup, so a good situation on second and two. It's now third and one. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw toward the sideline. And look at that catch. Dragging the toes. And that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. A good pick up there of 20 yards. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. Once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun, and they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And no 
escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Domita Pecco in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and they'll get back three, but this remains a large deficit. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it's likely not going to matter much, but at least they get themselves three points closer to respectability. And I don't know that they're going to feel a whole lot better about things because they've clearly been outplayed all game long. But hey, no reason not to take the points when the opportunity presents itself. And Denver getting set to take the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Play fake to Anderson. Now Simeon. Escaping the pressure right. He's going to let this go deep. Back over the middle. And a scary incompletion. Almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. The improv act there, good for nine, and now they'll be looking at a third and short, third and one. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Simeon wants to throw on third and one. Found his target, it's Anderson. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take it look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Soft through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. 18 big yards on that one, and a Denver first. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Handoff comes to Anderson. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. They'll try the air now with Simeon. Zone for a Denver touchdown. Emmanuel Sanders, his second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Broncos add on. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about you know getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Now McManus on to kick this one off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. On first down, Brady. And Cooks has it over the middle. The completion good for three, and it's second down. 
one thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to... Allen hit. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. So a good spin move there before he's taken down. A nice little game. A good first down call as the screen play gets him nine. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Again, they'll throw with Brady. And it's caught left side by Cooks. And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. It's a big play there for the Patriots. 41 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning. And this is caught. Well, they get one back. Picking up the late touchdown here, but still down big. And that touchdown, well, it barely puts a dent in this lead. And unfortunately, I'm having too many flashbacks right now. I remember getting beat down like this playing before. Oh, yeah, college, high school? College, not a heck of a lot of fun. I still remember playing and trying to tackle an elusive tailback who ended up scoring four touchdowns, 226 yards. He scored so many times and had so many great runs. I knew every note to their school's fight song. Bet that ice bath felt extra cold afterwards. Too, oh, 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 no, there was no ice bath. You're just trying to get out of there before the reporters got to you. And to no one's surprise here in Denver, that'll carry through the back of the end zone for a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup? Let him get some time. And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. Throwing on third down, Simeon. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. Broncos going on fourth. It's Simeon. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. David Harris coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. the gun it's Brady this is caught Gronkowski and he's across for the touchdown too little too late but he does get in for six no wonder you're grinning you just beat me in our fantasy league indeed I did my good man well I do have one word for that touchdown for you partner you ready yeah 
cosmetics. <laughs> Just makes things look a little better. I don't know. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, and it's hard, it's hard to do, too. And the pig doesn't like the lipstick a heck of a lot, but you do like the fact that they're battling down the stretch, still trying to put something on the board, even though this game is over. By the way, how rude is that to the pig? <laughs> look at all the things they give us. Pulled pork, bacon. one up to the 35-yard line. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly. Wise beyond his years. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver.